In 1973, the World One program said that the world would end in the year 2040. It was a computer model designed to predict how life on Earth would evolve. Back then, 2040 was still quite a long way away. Now, it's a lot closer. So, are you freaking out yet? The World One program was commissioned by a group known as the Club of Rome and developed by MIT scientists back in 1973. It was a computer model to show the way in which certain aspects of human civilization, including population growth, energy use, and quality of life, were trending into the future. At the time, it attracted some attention because it saw mostly bad things ahead for us. Pollution levels, for example, were forecast to skyrocket to the point that they would end up killing off massive sections of the global population. But ultimately, it perhaps didn't worry people enough in the early 1970s. And when, in 2018, the Australian Broadcasting Corporation re-released news footage showing its original coverage of the story, the World One program again made headlines across the planet. This time because much of what it had predicted to happen appeared to be coming true. It suggested, for example, that the global population would rapidly grow from the 70s until at least 2020, which it has done. It also noted how the level of natural resources available to us would steadily decline in the same period, which rings true as well. It predicted that the somewhat hard-to-quantify metric of quality of life would also steadily fall so that by 2020, it would match levels last seen in around 1920. The jury's out on that, but either way, the outlook from 2020 onwards wasn't good. The World One program foresaw that by the year 2040, pollution levels would dramatically rise beyond all other metrics. As a direct result, it predicted that the global population would dramatically fall from its 2020 peak, largely because of the pollution and a runaway human lifestyle. And finally, it said that quality of life would drop even further for those that still survived. At its bleakest, the World One program predicted the end of civilization by 2040, midway through the 21st century. In the 1973 ABC feature, the reporter had gone on to refer to the then-unknown 2020s as a, quote, highly critical period, as a specific time when living conditions could very quickly plummet. And it could be argued that this general message does reflect the current state of the world, with issues around climate, population, and equality tending to dominate the big questions of today. Now, we're grappling with the realities of various climatological tipping points, so much so that we're increasingly starting to look at the wider solar system for potential planets to escape to, should we need to. As a society, we're increasingly influenced by the idea that an apocalypse could be just around the corner, which is ultimately what the World One program claimed to be the case. Elsewhere, the doomsday clock is probably the most prominent measure we have for how long we've potentially got left. Managed by the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists, it's regularly updated to reflect current threat levels. In the year 1991, it was at 17 minutes to midnight, the farthest from midnight it's ever been since it was created in 1947. Interestingly, at roughly this time, the early 90s, with the World One program, it was predicted that the population metric would surpass the quality of life metric for the first time, and also that the pollution metric would start its rapid, unsustainable rise. And since 1991, the doomsday clock has generally matched the predictions of World One in that its outlook has gotten gloomier and gloomier. Crucially, in 2020, the clock was moved the closest to midnight it's ever been, at 100 seconds to. So we can see that its projections do still tally with the World One program and that today's era is deemed a vital time before a perceived oncoming imminent disaster. Among the reasons cited for the 2020 change to the clock, the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists highlighted a failure by world governments to lessen the threat of nuclear war, as well as a continued failure to address climate change. The stark reality, then, is that for all the modern world's advantages, we're still never without the knowledge that a horde of weapons could one day end it all in minutes. And then, there's the increasing risk that the general conditions of Earth could turn against us, too, with devastating consequences. So, with all of this in mind, how far should we really be preparing for the end of days within the near future? As part of the original ABC feature on the World One prediction, expert analysts from the Club of Rome had suggested that international blocks could be one of the best ways forward. And to some degree, we have seen the international map evolve in this way, particularly with the United States, China, and the European Union. 
The same analysts also called for the world's biggest polluters to significantly reduce their output, though, and the results here haven't been as straightforward. Thankfully, in recent years, we have seen a greater emphasis on climate issues than perhaps ever before in international law, with the Paris Agreement tying most of it together, since the First Nations signed it in 2016. But in most cases, we're yet to see whether the various ecological targets set by countries all over the world will be met, and there have already been some high-profile withdrawals from the Paris Agreement, most notably the United States, which withdrew in 2020, but rejoined in 2021. According to data from the Union of Concerned Scientists, there is then still great reason to be, well, greatly concerned. The Union estimates that 28% of CO2 emissions now come from China. The US is second with around 15%. At the time of the World One program, however, the United States had been highlighted as the greatest producer of pollutants in the world. So we can see how, just in this one instance, the landscape has changed in the years between 1973 and now. Interestingly, though, the U.S. is still ranked within the top five countries for carbon emissions per capita, while China falls outside the top ten for this particular measure. But in general, it really matters not which country is contributing what. From an international perspective, it's clear that global carbon emissions are continuing to rise year on year, and that's bad news for everyone. Nevertheless, it's not all doom and gloom. And again, the situation has changed considerably since the results of the World One program were first made public with more and more modern services, companies, and initiatives aiming to push humanity into a cleaner and safer future. According to the International Energy Agency's Global Energy Review 2020, for example, almost 28% of the world's electricity generation now comes from renewable power sources. And while the growth rate for renewables has slightly dropped since 2018, the percentage share that renewables have in the total energy market has continued to increase. During the early stages of the COVID-19 pandemic, the IEA also claimed that renewable energy had emerged as the, quote, most resilient energy source against lockdown measures. Those who worked on the World One predictions in the 1970s called for global action to try to combat the alarming trends that their program had unearthed. So perhaps this recent increase in the uptake of renewables is an example of such action taking place. The big question now is, are we too late? And if not, can we continue making steps in the right direction? For now, few scientists or authorities would confidently claim that the world really will end in the year 2040. And in fairness, even the World One program didn't forecast total extinction for humankind. Just the total breakdown of human civilization and a catastrophic drop in population. Still, it should be unnerving to all of us that so far, our recent history has so closely mirrored what an MIT computer predicted would happen in 1973, and therefore its predictions for the next 20 years can't be discarded. Instead, they serve as a dire warning for everyone on Earth. According to the study, there could be dark days ahead for us, but the hope for many in science and technology is that all is not lost, just yet. What do you think of the World One prediction? Will it continue to come true so that the world ends within 20 years? Or is the outlook brighter now than it was back then? We've certainly seen supposed dates for the end of the world come and go before now, but even if we do survive to see 2041, perhaps this is one foreboding forecast that we should be paying attention to. What do you think? Is there anything we missed? Let us know in the comments, check out these other clips from Unveiled, and make sure you subscribe and ring the bell for our latest content.